First of all, uh, thank you very much for the invitation, uh, Ruiz. I'm very glad uh, to open this, uh, <coughs> this celebration in Peru. Uh, I, uh, I know Peru, I have uh, visited the country, which is a very nice uh, country. And I am glad that there is a celebration for the World Logic Day in Peru. Well, I choose a very general topic uh, for this uh, lecture uh, because that's uh, which is connected with my vision of logic as a general uh, um, understanding of uh, reality and uh, human beings and everything. I will explain more in my talk. Let's see. Okay. Well, first of all, a few words about uh, Miro Quezada. I will not say much because uh, Riz already said something. Uh, but um, I, I, had the, I had the pleasure to meet uh, Quezada in, uh, at a conference in Sao Paulo uh, many years ago. And um, I know his work uh, mainly through the work of Newton da Costa because uh, Newton da Costa in his, in his book about the foundation of logic, he has a summarized, he, he has a presentation, I will say not to summarize, but a, a full presentation of ideas of Quezada, especially this idea uh, which were published in this paper uh, by Quezada, Heterodox Logic and the Problem of the Unity of Logic. I will not uh, Enter in the details of this paper, but uh, to summarize the main idea of the, of the paper of Quezada is that Quezada is defending the idea that there are, there are many logics, but only one reason. And this is also uh, my uh, point of view. Well, so as Luis was saying in the introduction, uh, there is a strong connection between Quezada and Newton da Costa because um, Newton da Costa was the main uh, promoter of power constant logic in the world um, since the end of the 50s. At some point, he asked Quezada to have a good name for this uh, logical system he was uh, working on. And uh, Quezada made this realization of power constant logic in uh, 60, uh, in 76. And I have been working in, uh, with uh, Newton da Costa since uh, many years now. So the question uh, which is discussed in the paper of Quezada, and this is still a question which is discussed, uh, which, is, which has been discussing uh, these days, it's the opposition between classical and non-classical logics. And what does all this uh, mean? That's, that's a question. That's an important question that we uh, have to investigate with care to have a good understanding of what logic is. So we can ask this question, which is the right logic, if any? And <clears throat> to answer this question, we have to, we have, to have a clear idea of the very nature of logic. And most of the time, the nature of logic, the idea of the nature of logic is not clear. I think it's very important to make a distinction between two aspects of logic. I, um, explained, I explained that in a paper I wrote uh, in 2010, which is called Logic is Not Logic, which was published in this paper, in the journal Abstracta. And uh, the main idea can be, ex ex uh, can be described by this uh, picture, which is here, where we have a kind of, uh, we have a diagram uh, uh, corresponding to a kind of logical system, famous one by the big shift by Frege. And I just wrote, this is not logic with a big capital letter L. Why? Let me explain that. So uh, I start in this, paper, in this paper, I'm making a distinction between um, two aspects of logic using and, and uh, giving two different names, but two different names is the same name, logic, but one word with, is uh, with a small L at the beginning, initial letter, and the other one is a big L, as you see, logic and logic, that's the difference. How, uh, what, how, what is this difference? Well, logic with a big L 
is a name for the activity of reasoning. I'm using this name for the activity of reasoning. And logic with a small L is a name for the science of reasoning. And we cannot confuse the two things, even if they are, uh, uh, of course, if they are really uh, strongly connected. But we have to make this difference. So, um, and more, more, <coughs> much of the time there is a confusion because people are using the same word for the two things. Yeah. And when, we're, when we are using the same word for two different things, the, the consequence of that is confusion. So how to escape this confusion? Making this a small uh, difference, scriptural di difference between the big and the small L. To do that, I was inspired, but uh, yeah, I was inspired by what is uh, taking place in the history. But before going that, let me uh, quote uh, the, uh, George Boo, uh, very important logician. Um, who can be considered as a father of modern logic and uh, with using, um, not uh, this distinction I, I'm making, but he, with uh, using the expression, the science of logic. I think this is a good expression. So I, I will read the quotation, the which is from the law of thought. The design of the following treatise is to investigate the fundamental laws of those operations of the mind by, by which reasoning is performed. So this is the activity of reasoning. To give expression to them in the symbolic line language of a calculus and upon this foundation to establish the science of logic. So Bull is making is clearly making the difference between logic as reasoning and the science of uh, reasoning, which uh, uh, is calling the science of logic. So. Uh, my uh, way to express this, this, this distinction <clears throat> was inspired by what uh, is going on in history. So in history, in English, also in French, and uh, in some other language or so, there is uh, this difference with history with the big H and the history with the small H. So history with the big H is a series of events, what happened, and then history with the small H is the science which, which studies history. Sometimes it's called historical science or something like that. But uh, most of the time people just, just history, well, I'm studying history or something like that. There is an interesting book about that uh, by Wolf, which is a global history of history. So it's funny because in this title, you see that you have history. So it's a history of history, but it's uh, the two aspects of history. So uh, that's, I think it's quite funny. And that's why I decided to use also this uh, distinction with a small L and a big L for logic. Okay. Now let's go, let's see what uh, uh, so, some few, few remarks about the development of logic. So in the 20th century, uh, before the 20th century, we already have some, uh, some science of logic. Uh, everybody agrees to say that the science of logic started with Aristotle. And uh, the distinction between, um, between logic and logic is important because we can claim that uh, Aristotle is the first logician in the sense that he's the first to have developed the science of reasoning. But of course, he's not the first, lo he's not the first logician in understood as the first man who was able to reason. He will, he, will, he will himself never had claimed that. The idea of Aristotle is that human beings are, are logical animals and they were a logical animals from the start. They were always logicians in this sense. Okay. So in the 20th century, we have a proliferation of logical systems. I'll make here a short list. All these different kinds of logical systems and all these logical systems are part of the science of uh, logic, trying to describe uh, the different ways that we are reasoning or, or the different way we can reason with some application, for example, in technology and something like that. You want a computer to make something, uh, so you implement 
a system that is supposed to describe reasoning and to perform reasoning also. So here also there is a, there is a, a we see the, the interconnection because we describe the reasoning and on the basis of this description, then we implement a system that will perform the reasoning. So that's why the two thing, the two aspects are always much connected. Then um, I start to, to work on universal logic conceived as a general theory of logical systems. It means it's a theory of all these different kinds of, of systems. So on the, on the one hand, here on the left, we have um, all these logical systems, logistics, classical logic, and so on. And on the right, we have what we can call uh, metalogic, which is the study of this logical system, metalinguage, meta theorems, combination of systems, translation between logical systems, <clears throat> that's metalogic. And universal logic is uh, in the same direction of uh, metalogic. I just think that the world universal logic is better than the world, than, than the world metalogic, but I, will not, I can explain that, but I will not enter in detail here. So universal logic is not, uh, from this point of view, we have to stress, to emphasize that uh, universal logic is not a logical system. It's not a logical system. Metalogic is not a logical system. It is a theory of all logical system in the same way uh, as what is uh, taking place in linguistics. We have a science with is general linguistics, which is not a language you can do, but it's a theory of all languages. And you can perform general linguistics in English, Chinese, French, Russian. So general linguistics, you can perform that in any kind of language and it's not a language. Uh, it's interesting to see that in, in, in the case of linguistics, they don't have a name for this uh, theory. They just call this general linguistics. Maybe, uh, maybe at some point they will call it this universal linguistics. I don't know. Okay, so I did a PhD. I start, I, I'm working on this uh, direction since many years. I, I defended my PhD on uh, universal logic in 95. So now it is 25 years ago. And at the University of Paris 7, and with this is, uh, you can see the, my PD advisor, uh, Daniel Handler, who is a logician who did his PhD in the school of uh, Alfred Tarski at the University of Berkeley. And my, uh, my work on universal logic is very much inspired uh, by uh, the work of Alfred Tarski on the consequence operator. So I am happy to present this work here uh, during the work logic day, which is the date, of, the day of birth of uh, 14th of January is the day of birth of Al Alfred Tarski. Well, so uh, I will not uh, speak more uh, about universal logic. It's not the main topic of my talk here, but just uh, I give uh, an overall, uh, an overall uh, well, uh, vision of uh, all, uh, what is going on. So uh, we have organized uh, many uh, different uh, meetings, which are called Unilog. And the next one will be in 2022 in Crete in Greece. Everybody's welcome. And um, I have uh, created this uh, journal Logic Universalis, this book series, Studies in Universal Logic, and published uh, an anthology of paper about Universal Logic with paper by Tarski, and so on. That's it. Now let's go to the more general approach that we can have about logic, because what we in universal logic, what we are doing mainly is uh, in the first step, I will say in the first step is to make a general theory of all these logical systems. But when we are doing this uh, general theory of all this logical system, we always have to be aware that what we are studying, we want to study reasoning. Yes, and so these systems are a kind of description of uh, reasoning. And uh, in this general perspective of, uh, of uh, universal logic, we also stay connected with the, the reasoning, which is the subject matter of all these uh, logical systems. So uh, rationality is considered as what characterizes human beings. 
So human beings are called rational animals. Uh, originally in Greek, it's logical animals. Rational is a Latin translation of logical. But in Greece, since the time of ancient Greece, the human beings were uh, defined, characterized as logical animals. We have to understand what it means, logical animals. I think it's, it's good to, to remember the word logical animals, because when we talk about rationality, it's, uh, the, the, the word rationality is more uh, limited than the word logical. It's a translation in Latin, as I was saying. So uh, as explained when I was launching this uh, World Logic Day, uh, I, I, I said that for this reason, uh, just explain that we can consider that the World Logic Day is a celebration of humanity because logic is what is uh, characterize humanity. And it's funny because uh, for during, during 16 year, 16 centuries, January 14 was the first day of the calendar. People don't remember this nowadays, but this calendar was created by Julius Caesar and was in action until the 16th century and is still in action in some country with uh, Orthodox Christian religion. So in some sense, tomorrow will be the first day of the year, of the new year, 2021. Well, and uh, let me also, Louise where was uh, speaking about that, but let me remember that uh, we, succeed to, we succeeded to enter this day in the UNESCO calendar, thanks to the Brazilian ambassador at UNESCO at this time, Maya Ediles. So yeah, and she was very enthusiastic to promote this World Logic Day. We have to remember that. Because we, we succeed to do, this, to do that in a very short time. You know, because I visited here in April 2019, and it was approved in October, uh, in October of the same year. So it was uh, the quickest uh, day being recognized by UNESCO. And it was approved by all the countries of the UNESCO. Same percent, 100 percent of success. Well, now let me let have a look at this quotation by uh, David Hilbert famous mathematician and also one of the central figure of uh, the development of uh, logic in the 20th century. Um, the quotation is, a follow, is as follow. Mathematics knows no races or geographic boundaries. For mathematics, the cultural world is one country. So it's going in this direction of mathem of uh, what, uh, what we are saying about uh, rationality, about uh, logic. And mathematics is, is, is uh, most of the time considered as an example of uh, development of reasoning. When we think about reasoning, we think about mathematical reasoning. And we can say in some sense that uh, mathematical reasoning is uh, one of the highest form of reasoning. And as Hilbert is saying, this capacity of doing mathematics, of re mathematical reasoning, is of all uh, human beings, not uh, limited to one specific race or one specific culture. Let me uh, present another quote by, um, by Hilbert in the Logical Foundation of Mathematics, where he explained why uh, logic that he promoted as a proof theory, or he was also using the expression metamathematics, was superior, superior to mathematics. You see, in the first paragraph, he say, well, he's talking about the axioms, proof of, of, uh, of mathematics, but it's, he, he, what he's saying is that this is not the absolute truth that the absolute truths are truth about the, this uh, proof, about this demonstration in mathematics. This is metamathematics. That was the word he, that's the word he chose to use. 
And we can also use the word uh, metallurgic, which in some sense can be uh, understood as kind of synonym of metamathematics. In, uh, in, in the Polish school, they were using metallurgic rather than metamathematics. And uh, it's connected also to a wider vision of, uh, of the field of logic. So we can say that uh, metallurgic, universal logic, and so on, is the reasoning about reasoning. It's reasoning about reasoning. We are trying to understand what is reasoning. Can I ask the question? Reasoning about reasoning is the highest science. We can claim, we can defend this uh, claim because to understand what is, uh, what is reasoning, to reason to reasoning about reasoning is to understand what is reasoning. And reason, if we, if we uh, think that reasoning is, uh, is strongly connected with understanding, so we can re re rephrase this uh, sentences as understanding, understanding. It's, it's an understanding of understanding. And it's possible to understand understanding. This is quite uh, fascinating. So next year, uh, this year, I mean, <laughs> next year, this year, I hope to be able to organize a second World Congress of the Brazilian Academy of Philosophy about this question of understanding. Here there's a quotation by, uh, the, of the proverbs, uh, which uh, are uh, supposed to be uh, being uh, written by uh, Salomon, where uh, he's, he's talking about understanding. And this is, will be the second Congress of the Brazilian Academy of Philosophy after the first one. Uh, Louise was talking about that also in the introduction which was last uh, in 2019, uh, about one year ago, which was about creativity and which was uh, dedicated to uh, Newton Acosta. Okay, now let's go to the last part of my talk. So we are logical animals, human beings are logical animals and we want to have a better understanding of all this, uh, of this general idea of logical animal. And we can do that not only by uh, developing logical systems, by making a general theory of logical system, but by trying to have a better understanding about also about what is not uh, necessarily necessary rational. Because we can understand something uh, by understanding what it is and what it is not and relating with other fields. I think that's very important. Let's remember the four aspects of the word, of the meaning of the word of logos, logos in Greek. <coughs> so logos uh, was translated in Latin as uh, rational, rationality. But it's a limited understanding of logos because logos in Greece has four uh, meanings. Reasoning is one aspect of logos. Science, you know, science. When we are talking about anthropology, the science of human beings, psychology is the science of psyche and so on. So you see that this word logos is used here as uh, meaning science. Psychology is the science of psyche and, and so on. There is a logos mean also language. And we find this meaning in many, in different words, like for example, when we are use, when we're in the word neologism, neologism mean new words. So it's uh, in the word neologism, logos is used as meaning words, language, and so and syllogistic also. Syllogism mean putting together some sentences or something like that. And we also have the fourth sense, which is very important, which is a relation. We find this uh, we find this meaning in the mathematical uh, name irrational numbers. Irrational numbers, which is a translation in Latin, means that uh, this the irrational numbers are numbers which are not relation between two natural numbers. That's why they are called irrational, because they are not a relation between two natural numbers. And rational numbers are relation between two natural numbers. Nowadays, we express this rational number by fraction. So, for example, 
you say five divided by three. Five divided by three is a rational number because it's a relation between two natural numbers. So this is a fourth meaning of logos. So I think that, so that's very important to have this full understanding of what logos is. Now, uh, the, the logos, the rationality, is something connected with uh, other aspects, or not only of reasoning, not, it's not only reasoning, but it's connected with other aspects also, which are fundamental in human beings. In particular, so I, I talk about that in this paper, being aware of rational animals. Here you, I have the reference of, the, of, the, of this paper. And in this paper, I am talking about, in particular, I'm talking about lauf, lauf, laughing, which is also a character, something which characterizes human beings, as it was already um, recognized by uh, people in Greece, by Aristotle himself. He says that uh, the human beings are the only animal which are able to laugh. And there is a strong connection between uh, reasoning and laughing, rationality and laughing, which has been uh, described by uh, uh, several famous philosophers, in particular, uh, Henri Bergson in his famous book on uh, Lauf. I wrote a paper about that uh, uh, not so long ago, where I'm talking about this relation between uh, rationality and uh, Lauf. It's a very interesting topic. And in general, uh, it's worth uh, studying uh, all the aspects of the human uh, psyche psychism the different emotion. Uh, in, I wrote a paper about that also. Uh, I'm using, um, I am using this expression, uh, psychic disposition. And I uh, draw uh, an hexagon, trying to understand these different psychic uh, disposition that you can see here on the, on the picture. And it's interesting because what we are doing here is to use the theory of reasoning expressed uh, here um, with the hexagon of opposition, which is an extension of the square of opposition. So we are, we are using logical tools, logical tools, logical system. We are using that to understand human uh, psychism. So <clears throat> logic, we can reason about the general aspect of uh, human mind, not only about I I I the rational aspect of human mind, but about all this uh, aspect of uh, human minds. That's quite interesting to have this uh, vision of logic. About the square of opposition, uh, I have also developed uh, a field of research uh, on, the, on this topic of square of opposition, organizing uh, many different kinds of events. We will have the seventh uh, event of the square of opposition in September uh, of this year in Leuven, Belgium. And you see all this kind of publication we had on the, we already have on the square of opposition, which has been used, this theory, which has been used to understand many aspects of human activities, in particular the theory of quarrels the question of music and so on, which also are typical feature of human beings because music, it's also considered that the human uh, beings are the only uh, animals uh, who are producing uh, music. And the colors, uh, it's uh, a typical, of course, uh, it's connected with reality, but the colors are uh, as uh, perceived by human beings are an interaction between human, uh, human mind and reality, as we know nowadays. Now, it's also interesting to compare uh, human reasonings and with the activity uh, of other animals. So uh, I wrote recently a paper about this, uh, this topic, which is called, Are Dogs Logical Animals? Because there was a king of England, uh, he was very fond of dogs, very fond of dogs, and he tried to prove that dogs were able to reason. And he succeeded 
in fact, he made a very interesting experiment proving that uh, dogs are able to perform what is sometimes called uh, disjunctive syllogism, which is a very advanced way of reasoning because it's using negation. Well, so he was able to prove that dogs can do that. So can we conclude from that that dogs are rational animals? What I explain in this uh, paper is that my answer is as follows. We can say, it's again to answer this question, we have to uh, be aware of these two uh, aspects of logic. Logic as reasoning and logic as theory of reasoning. So dogs are logical animals in the sense they are able to perform reasoning. That's clear. But they are not logical animals in the sense they are not able to develop a science of reasoning. So the disjunctive syllogism can be described uh, as a truth table, as a proof system, and so on. So the dog the dog is able to perform this reasoning, but is not able to understand uh, the truth table corresponding to this, is not able to understand the truth table corresponding to this reasoning. And that's a very important distinction. Okay. Now, uh, in the final part of my talk, I will say uh, some things about religion, <coughs> also a topic I've been working on. So in the Bible, uh, in the New Testament, uh, the New Testament is written in Greek. Okay. And uh, it's written in Greek, and the word logos is used. Uh, is, you, is used in this John 1 1, the first sentence of the Evangel of John. And it's written, um, I'm re I, will write, I will read this in. Uh, in English, in the beginning was the Logos, and the Logos was with God, and the Logos was God. Uh, often, uh, so I, I, I didn't translate here the word Logos. Because it's, it's a word which is very difficult to translate, as I was explaining, because there are four different meanings. <clears throat> so uh, Sometimes people translate this word here in the Bible as something like verb or word or something like that. But uh, it's a very, uh, it's not a good translation because we cannot uh, identify God with uh, the lingua. It's a bit absurd, you know. It's more like uh, how can we understand uh, the use of the word logos here? Well, it means that, uh, it means science, and also the, 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 the activity of reasoning. And this is clearly expressed, uh, de defended, and ex uh, defended <coughs> and explained by uh, philosopher, uh, rationalist philosopher uh, like Leibniz and uh, Hegel, we, who were a Christian philosopher, and they defended the, the idea that the world, the, the world, is rational because God is, is a Logos. I wrote a paper, uh, so we start to organize, uh, uh, with my friend Ricardo Silves, we start to organize a big event on the logic and religion. The first one was in 2015 in Jean Pessoa in, uh, in Brazil. And at this, uh, at this meeting, I presented the, the talk uh, joint talk with the Newton da Costa, is God par consistent? The, the paper has been uh, published. I will not enter in detail. And we are organizing, so the second, the second edition of this event was organized in uh, Poland in Warsaw in 2017. We had a great, uh, lecture, great uh, people giving lectures there, very, very famous people. We had uh, Saul Kripke, we had Laforgue with uh, Fields made in mathematics. We had also uh, the guy who won the Templeton Prize, and it was a very big success. And now we are preparing the, the third edition. It was supposed to happen uh, last year, but we cancelled it because due to the pandemic. 
And it will happen uh, this year in November in 2021 in India, which is also a very important uh, place uh, for religion and also for uh, logic and mathematics. So it's, uh, it's, that's why we, we, we decide to choose this uh, location. The, in fact, uh, it's interesting because the event will be organized at this Banaras, Banaras Hindu University, which is a very famous university in India. And it is organized by the Depart of, Department of Mathematics of this university. And Varanasi is considered as the most sacred uh, city in the, for the Hinduist tradition. For the Hinduist tradition, uh, everybody is vi visiting this uh, country. It's like the Mecca in the Islamic religion or Roma for Christian people. That's it. Uh, I am, uh, and now I am ready to uh, reply to uh, questions. Thank you, Janif. Uh, somebody wants to ask a question or make uh, any criticism, a remark of on Janif's presentation. Yes, I would like to ask a question. Um, can you hear me? Yes. With regard to the quote from Hilbert, if you think that um, uh, the different logic, so there's also, I suppose, uh, you would agree there's Chinese logic, Indian logic, Babylonian logic, pharaonic logic, and, and mathematics as well. Yeah, I can, in my presentation, I can show um, a Chinese diagram that is used to prove the Pythagorean theorem. So that's one example of uh, non-Western uh, mathematics. Yeah, my question to you is, uh, if you use words like universal logic, do you think that these different non-Western logics are reducible uh, to each other? Well, uh, it's a good question. We have, uh, so there is a general, we have, there is a general capacity of reasoning. Yes. Mm -hmm. And there is something in common between this general capacity of reasoning. Of course, this general capacity of reasoning can be expressed in different ways. It's the same way as the language, you know. It's interesting to make the comparison. So the language, there are many different languages and then uh, you were speaking about Chinese and we know that Chinese language because it's based on the uh, ideogram, it's as a structure which is quite different from let's say English. It's quite mm -hmm. different, uh, there is no doubt about this. But despite this difference, there is something in common. That's why we are able to translate one language to, to another one. And that uh, a Chinese with a, can uh, communicate with a, an English man, either in English or English or in other language, because there is something in common which is beyond all this language, which is uh, the, the which is. Uh, capacity of uh, of uh, speaking, talking, writing, and mm -hmm. general linguistics is studying this uh, general feature of all language. So there are some general feature of all languages. So I agree that uh, in China, in India, and in different places, the reasoning was expressed expressed in different ways. Sure, of course, and and the expression of reasoning, the money. I guess the Janiv, I think uh, uh, it has frozen his connection. Oh, yeah. mm. uh, you, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Now, now, I, yes. now we can hear you. Ah, sorry, sorry. But uh, you didn't hear me before? Like uh, for 20 seconds, we could. Ah, yeah. Okay. Sure, sure. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, the microphone. So, what I'm saying is that there are different expressions of reasoning, and we are changing all the time the way to express our reasoning. And there is an interaction between the way that we express reasoning and the study of this reasoning, interaction between the two. Nowadays, uh, I mean, in the 20th century, it's not the same as the 19th century. So there is an evolution. There is an evolution of the manifestation of reasoning, of the expression of reasoning. But we can say there is, there is something being all these different forms of reasoning that we can try to study as a science of, uh, of reasoning. That's uh, how I will express the, the situation. And the, the idea would would uh, non-Western logic or cross-cultural logic, would it be uh, sorry, one I more didn't... item yeah, on the list the... of logics? What, 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 was, what was the expression? Which kind of logic? 
uh, well, for instance, non-Western logic or cross-cultural logic, could that be an independent discipline in logic or is it actually, uh, for instance, a part of non-classical logic? What would you say? Would you include it to the list or say uh, it's the same content that can be uh, analyzed in the same by paraconstant constant logic, by model logic, by uh, non-classical logic? Or could it be added as a spe specific item? I guess actually it's a specific item for you have to study a Chinese logic, you have to study the Chinese text, you have to study the Indian text, the Babylonian text. And um, yeah, I would suggest it's a, a specific item. In fact, all those uh, logics like Chinese logic, Indian logic, Babylonian logic, Pharaonic logic could all be added as items, I guess, to the list. Yeah, sure. It's like language, you know. Chinese, mm -hmm. the same thing is not the same as uh, French, German, and so on. It's a different mm -hmm. language. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's obvious. Mm -hmm. And then we have also, so we have different uh, expression of reasoning, and we also have different uh, logical system describing different uh, way of reasoning. That's it. But mm -hmm. what is important? What is important? I think what is worse to do. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, it's nice to study all these particular things. That, like it's nice to study a particular language. Uh, we have mm. to we have to face re this reality, but it's also nice to have a general theory, which can uh, capture what is common to all this way of reasoning. Mm. That's uh, what I'm working on in, in the mm -hmm. case of universal logic, or something like the square of opposition. So th th this is these are two aspects, but they are not incompatible. I mean, mm. of course. We, are, we don't want to say that there is only way, one way of reasoning in the sense that there is only classical logic uh, as a first order logic. I think this is completely absurd. At some mm -hmm. point, people were believing that, you know, at the beginning of the 20th century, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, we know now it's completely absurd to think like that. So it's mm -hmm. uh, first order logic, it's just only one system, which is a good quality, but it's, it does not. It's, it does not, uh, it's not the only system and, and does not describe uh, the, 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 it does not completely describe the way we are reasoning. It describes some part of reasoning in mathematics or something like that. You know? mm. Even mathematicians don't like first order logic, you know. <laughs> so, mm. what can we say? Yeah, yeah, okay, thank you very much. Yeah, I, I've Thanks. noticed, I'm not sure if that may hold for more places, but that the attention and the money that is uh, provided for research into uh, for instance, I'm, I'm from Europe, non-Western cultures, is uh, the attention is not getting much bigger, or do you think it's getting bigger? There's, they are doing more research into Indian logic now than, say, 20 years ago. Sure, um, sure, no, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's going on, that's clear, that's obvious nowadays. Yeah, could you mention an example, for instance, introduction into Chinese logic by uh, Western uh, people? I don't Just a moment. Uh, yeah, before yeah. that, uh, Itala yeah. and Abad will yeah. want to ask some questions. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Because... Thank you very much. No, thank you very uh, much for your answers. I will try to find more answers myself. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, sorry, no, but I okay, just say final word about that. There are a lot of books, uh, and if mm -hmm. I want, I, I can give you some indication uh, about all this study. Now, there's many books are published about this kind of stuff. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Thank you. May I speak? Yes. Yes, uh, Peter and, and Jaiv, um, as Peter said, you asked it, if we could consider, for instance, some, some non-Western logics as non-classical logics, if you consider that, I think, if you consider that, non, that classical logic means the Aristotelian logic, okay, uh, the other logics, not equivalent or identical to classical logic, I think that they can be called non-classical logics. For example, the logic is you are mentioning the non-Western logics. But the, the, the idea is that mm. what we could think, what we could say that a logic is, we have some papers uh, in a general research project began mm -hmm. um, in close relation to Jean-Yves Bézio's work, uh, what we could call, uh, how we could define a logic. We have considered that a logic is a set, not necessarily of uh, formulas, a set with a consequence operator. 
In special cases, when the set is a set of formulas of a special language, uh, we have uh, logical systems. But we need logics. We may have logics, for instance, deductive, inductive, abductive, and how could we compare or relation or interrelation these logics? According to us, by developing a general theory of translations between logic. We have some papers in, mm -hmm. in which we have proposed a very general definition for a function being a translation between logics. A function mm -hmm. is between logics is a translation if it maintains mm -hmm. derivability between the logics. And mm -hmm. we have special kinds of translation, conservative, contextual, etc. And so mm -hmm. you, you, you could uh, interrelate one logic with a second one, if you, if you define, if you could define a translation from the first logic into the second logic, such that the derivability uh, that characterized the first logic uh, could be maintained in the, into the target, into the, trans, into the second logic. And then it's like if you could, um, you could, as in the, in the case of the special logics, the um, natural languages, if you could, as if you, what would mm -hmm. be a translation? How to speak in the second logic, the things you have spoken in the first one, maintaining the meaning, not word by word, but the meaning, mm -hmm. uh, that is the derivability the, uh, that characterizes the structure of the languages. And mm -hmm. so I think that your question is very important, especially for, from the point of view of universal logic as a mm -hmm. theory uh, among logics. I don't know, could I explain? Yeah, thank you for, for, for explanation, yes. Mm -hmm. just, a comment, uh, uh, just a comment about what uh, Itala was saying. Uh, that's, uh, I, I, I talk a bit about that, but I didn't enter in details. It's, I was saying that part of universal logic is this question of translation of logic to understand mm -hmm. the relation between different logical systems. In the same way that we are, we are trying to, under, and the, that's why the people are using this word translation, in the same way that we are, uh, we are studying how it's possible to translate a language into another language. The idea to translate is establishing relation between different way of reasoning and different system of reasoning. So it's a very important topic, which has been developed, especially by this group of people in Campinas. Mm -hmm. Evandro wanted to ask a question to Evandro Gomez. Thank you very much. It's okay. The, you are yes, yes. listening? Yes. Hi, Evandro. Okay. Uh, Jaive, uh, thank you for your, your talk. Very creative and very uh, inspiring. Uh, I, I don't know, maybe I missed uh, 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 some point in your presentation, but uh, I, I just uh, want to comment uh, that I, I think you have, have you attributed to the Stoics, the, uh, the ability of the dogs to handle with disjunctive syllogism. Uh, I, I, I am, mm. I, I remember I, I was surprised to mm. find this point in Stoic mm. sources. Very, very uh, interesting um, point uh, by the, the genial, the ingenious Stoics. Uh, and the second one uh, that the, the logos in the John's Gospel uh, have a precise theological meaning, and the the, the God the, ver the the notions of God in Leibniz and Hegel are not uh, exactly the same. Uh, this, uh, I would like to to make this uh, these two comments only. Thank you. <laughs> That's fine, Evandro. But I think you know about the Bible. Mm -hmm. That, uh, of course, there are different ways to understand the Bible. But uh, for me, uh, I, I think that people like, like Leibniz and Hegel, in some sense, 
have a, have a very uh, good understanding of uh, of this logos in the Bible mm. because they, they 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 know Greek philosophy and so on, and so they uh, they have this general understanding of what was going on at this time. But of course, we can discuss for hours about this interpretation of the Bible. It's a very uh, it's a topic which is much discussed. <laughs> Is there any other question for Janine or, or some remark? I have one question, Mr. Philippe, may I? Yes, of course. Janine, Itala, um, do you think that there are <laughs> other non-human animals that are also a kind of logical animals? Not well, only uh, dogs, I think. Yeah, it's an interesting topic. Um, able to so i didn't up to now i didn't make i am very interested in, i'm very interested in this topic but i didn't have really time to to investigate it, it but uh, as performing reasoning yeah we know that because we know that the golfing uh, how to say in english uh, golfing dolphin are uh, very intelligent uh, animals and also cats and also monkeys in some sense but each of these animals maybe has a different kind of reasoning. Uh, it doesn't mean that one is better than the other one. Maybe they, some have an aspect, some have another aspect of reasoning. And uh, yeah, there are different uh, animals who are um, able to, to perform reasoning, but none of them is able to make a science of reasoning. That's an important point. And tomorrow I will, um, I will give a talk. I will, I, will, I will speak about dogs and cats because I think that cats also are, are very intelligent, but they have not the same mm. kind of intelligence as, uh, as dogs. That's it. <laughs> Thanks. I agree with you. <laughs> Hello, uh, Janips. Yes. This is, And this is Andres. Yeah, uh, sure. I wrote in the chat, where was the proof of the English King about the dogs using the disjunctive the, the syllogies. Ah, like sorry, I, did, I, was, I was not looking at the chat. I'm, I'm looking at the chat now. What's no, but that's, uh, what uh -huh. was his proof and how do he develop that? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I will not uh, talk mm -hmm. about that today because we have it's uh, we don't have much time. But in the paper, in my paper, I explain the the proof. I explain what he did to prove that. So in this mm. the paper is, is already uh, has already been published and it's available mm. on website. <laughs> if you want, I can send you a copy of this paper and where I explain uh, this proof, which is very interesting proof. Very interesting proof. But do you agree with the proof? Sure. You are convinced? Yeah, yeah, I'm co completely convinced. Simple, I read percent, of course. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Send me <laughs> the paper. <laughs>